Hello everyone, today we'll be taking a look at the high grade Shiden from Gundam Iron Blooded Orphans. Like a lot of IBO high grades, the Shiden is one that was reprinted pretty recently with very positive feedback. There's lots of great designs from IBO, but for about a year and a half, we only had the Barbados available. It's really nice that these grunt suits have become more accessible. The build was very straightforward, although the kit has the same issues most if not all IBO high grades have, the connections in the frame being pretty loose over time. One thing I like about these IBO kits is that you have a mostly complete frame that you put the armor pieces on top of. It's going to make painting very easy, even though it will take a little longer. I do like how the kit is engineered, though this comes from the design of the Shiden itself. In terms of the design, the Shiden is very strong. It seems like a mech that could fit in a wide variety of situations and doesn't feel tied to the Gundam franchise. Now that the kit is built, it's time to paint. I can usually come up with paint schemes on my own, but I was thinking about the questions I've gotten about how I do that. And although my answer is always the same, that being instinct, there are some resources out there, and I want to show you one of them. There are online color palette generators, and that's how I'll be picking the color scheme for today's video. I also used a number generator to pick a random number from 1 to 100, getting the number 77. So in this color generator, I'll just keep creating new palettes until we get number 77. And here it is. Now, I'll be honest and just say that I'm not exactly thrilled about having to use purple and orange again, especially after how that last paint job with those two colors treated me, but I'll see what I can do. The kit was primed in Mr. Servicer 1000 and given a coat of Tamiya TS-17 Gloss Aluminum. Now we're applying the first color, purple. While mixing up this color, I really didn't know what I was doing, and the mixing ratio you see isn't even what I got at first, it's one I came up with when I was doing some repaints. It's actually a bit annoying how close this second mixture is to the first one I made, which brings up something I've noticed when mixing color. When I try to overanalyze a mixture, it takes longer and doesn't work as well as when I just mess around and go off of instinct. And this is something that's a little hard to explain to people who ask me for help mixing color. The main purple I used in this mixture was pretty far away from the color I needed, which is why this mixture was all over the place, but I did end up with a color that was a close enough match. And I'm just painting the frame with it. These IBO kits are nice because the outer armor pieces can be removed pretty easily, exposing just the frame. Painting did take a while since there's all of these recessed areas, and I also have to move the frame around just so I don't have any large areas of primer or metallic showing. That being said, I do like the look of the purple frame. Such a subdued purple works really well for this. It's pretty subtle but has a bit of personality as well. It's a nice change from the usual grey frames I'm used to and was very easy to paint just because it is so desaturated. I'm going ahead and painting the main grey. One thing which really helps with figuring out what colors go where is by leaving certain parts off the model and it certainly helps with painting as well so I don't have to do that much cleanup later on. So the grey I'm using is a color that is pretty new to me. This is the first time I'm working with it and I do like it even though it's a little darker than it looks in the bottle. I've got to mix up a lighter grey for the rest of the Shiden, and this is something I haven't done before, which is what I'm calling reverse accents. So normally when I paint accent colors, they're darker than the main color. This has a bit of visual logic to it, as I paint accent colors on places like elbows and knees, places on the inside of a plane if that makes sense. And because inner surfaces are usually darker due to shadows, the darker color makes sense. But because I'm using a lighter color than the main one, 
I'm calling it a reverse accent. I'm pretty sure the terminology makes no difference, but it sounds cool to me. This gray is super nice. If I made this the main color, I'd have no complaints. It's very similar to silver gray, a color I use a lot in that it looks like white, but it's slightly cool. This paint also dried slightly different than I'm used to, probably because I have some game color in the mix. I want to say game color dries a little smoother than model color, at least when you mix it with some model color. However, I don't have enough experience with Vallejo's game color range to make a definite statement. I am painting the backpack and leg thrusters with basalt gray. It's my go-to paint for all mechanical detail and I knew that I'd sneak it in somehow, even though I've got a pretty set color palette to work with. It does pair well with the existing colors, just like how it pairs well with every other color I've used with it so far. The last color I've got to use is orange, and like the purple, I wanted to use it a bit more creatively. I just didn't want orange to be on a shoulder or the entire mobile suit, so instead I'm using it for the inside of the thrusters on the backpack and legs. I've actually never used orange for this before, but I'm really liking the effect. I'm painting the eye sensor, I've chosen to paint it orange just to stick with the palette. My method of doing sensors is pretty simple. First I paint the detail black, then I go in with the metallic color, in this case steel, and I finish things off with the final sensor color, in this case fluorescent orange. When painting fluorescence, I sort of swamp the entire detail in the paint just to ensure that there's completely even coverage. It's time to add decals. I don't have a specific decal set for the Shiden, but I do have lots of generic 1 to 144 scale markings. The decals I'm using have small amounts of orange, which really evens out the colors and helps things flow. I am being pretty minimal with them, only wanting the decals to break up the finish slightly, just because I like how it looks so far, and I just don't want things to be too busy. I'm going ahead and doing a wash. I normally don't do a wash over the painted surface, choosing to apply a coat of semi-gloss beforehand so things are nice and neat, but I want some heavier weathering which is why I'm doing the wash now. When you do a wash over a flat surface, the wash spreads out over the model and creates all these tide marks and stains. It's actually the way I weather my weapons. I'm applying the wash in the usual manner, but if I get some paint spillage, I just blend it out with a combination of vertical streaks and tapping motions. But just because I want some more weathering doesn't mean that I'm being careless with this wash. I'm painting it in all the details the same way I do normally, it's just that I'm fine with a little spillage and I'll just tie it into the weathering. I let the wash dry for a little while, I'd say a couple of hours, and now I'm doing some physical chipping with metal tweezers. I never planned this stage and just let the chips happen. It's a very random process and that's the way I like it. In the past, I've also used a sanding sponge and a hobby knife to do chipping as well, but I'm starting to use the tweezers for everything. By bouncing the tweezers on the model surface, there's standalone random chips. By scraping the tweezers along the model, you get scratched effects. And if you rub the tweezers on the edges of the model, you get edge wear. I also use the tweezers to highlight parts of the frame where I think the paint would rub off just from the frame moving and the different pieces being in contact with each other. I'm sure that in real life it would be a uniform metallic surface instead of still having some lines of the purple left but I like the way it looks so it's staying that way. As much as I try to take a realistic approach with my Gunpla, at the end of the day, personal aesthetics are what really influences my methods. If I think something looks cool, I'll do it, and if I don't, I'll just skip it. It's as simple as that. I wanted to add a patina which starts off with heavy speckling all over the model, then with a flat brush, I just streak the specks downward, and this is a very simple way to create lots of filth and patina, and it's very effortless. There isn't a lot of thinking involved, which 
is something I can really appreciate. I felt the model needed a few rust tones, so I'm using a rust wash for that. I went very minimal with the rust just because I'm still trying to figure out how I feel on rust tones as a whole, but in addition to using it as a wash and putting it in some of the details, I do some very light speckling with it. After spraying the model with a coat of flat clear, I did some more speckling but with a glossy paint to break up the overall finish. I'm just painting and weathering the weapons, it's nothing too different from my usual method, painting, wash, chipping, speckling, flat, clear, and I do use the same colors as I did previously, but I did use a different metallic for the undercoat, TS42 light gunmetal, which is actually the metallic color I normally use. I hope that the difference in metallics translates, showing that the weapons are made of a different material than the mobile suit itself. Before the finished photos, here's a look at the color palette the computer chose for me. Here's how the colors I used look just to give an idea of how I interpreted things. And here's the finished model. Thank you for watching, as usual this isn't a definite tutorial but a look into my own method for painting Gumpla. If you liked the video, feel free to like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll be seeing you in the next video, whenever that is.